Hey crafters, I am yet again out running errands, doing some shopping, getting some stuff done, and I am also on the hunt for new upcycle projects. You guys know I'm always looking for clothes, maybe I got second hand, maybe I got for free, or maybe I got inexpensively, and I'm looking for ways that I can change those items up into something that maybe fits me better or fits my life and my sense of style. Today I'm at Ye Old Costco, hoping to get some tasty snacks, and also they have some clothing items that I have been eyeing and I've been thinking about for a pretty easy, pretty quick DIY. The last time I was here, I noticed that they had some uh, lightweight cotton pullover sweatshirts that had like a three quarter zip in white, as well as some other colors. I like the other colors, don't get me wrong, but you know, white and cotton, you know what we do with that, right? You can easily tie-dye those items. So I got to thinking, I'm like, oh, do I need a new sweatshirt? I don't know, don't we always need a new sweatshirt? But then they also had some like sporty skirts. You know, it looks like a skirt, but it has shorts in it. And they had a number of those in a number of colors, including white. And then I'm kind of thinking, could we do a sweatshirt and skirt combination? <laughs> could be really cute. I got some dye and I'm back. So I'm gonna go in, see if they still have the things I'm thinking of, and then see if we could take them home and just do a fun, quick, easy, easy. Is it ever easy? Yeah, it's usually easy. I think this should actually be an easy dye project and see if we can't transform these into something really fun. Let's head inside and I'll show you what I find. Okay guys, success. And a mocha freeze. Always a good thing. Fantastic. Okay, so I did get Nautica sweatshirt. You guys saw it's not cotton, it's a cotton blend, but we can still work with that. I ended up getting a smaller size than I normally would because it seems kind of boxy. And I was kind of thinking maybe like slightly slimmer fit for this one. So we'll see. Also, not sure what size I am in the skirt, but these are cute, right? Little, little ties at the sides. I guess you could cinch it if you want. It's from Colombia. And it's got the shorts. So I end up getting a couple of these because I wasn't sure. I'll have to take it home and see which one fits, but I think it could be pretty cute. We've got two slightly different colors going on here. This guy's more of an off-white cream, and this guy is definitely a true white and different fiber contents. But I still think they could be cute together. I like the navy details. So let me get these home. We should probably give these guys a wash. And then let me show you what I'm thinking of for our dye choices. And then maybe we could do a little, little crafty time. Here we go. Well, here's our sweatshirt and our skirt all washed and ready to go. Always a good idea to wash your new garments before you dye them in case the fabric has any finishes or coatings on it to keep the garment looking nice on the rack. I take a look at uh, those tags and that sweatshirt is about 55% cotton, 45 poly. And the skirt is actually mostly nylon, at least on the exterior. 
So, I'm thinking, can I dye both of these guys the same color, maybe even at the same time? Now, of course, polyester in the sweatshirt, polyester doesn't take normal dye. It's a synthetic, so you have to use dye for synthetics. But cotton does. So, I'm kind of thinking that the sweatshirt may not take the regular dye I'm hoping to use as well as the nylon squirt but hopefully they'll be kind of in the same color family like maybe the squirt will be darker and brighter and then the sweatshirt will be lighter but could maybe still go together also uh, the nylon in the squirt is great news because nylon and cotton and of course a lot of other fibers works just fine with normal writ dye I'm really digging this color denim blue. It, it seems to have some purple and some gray to it. And if you don't use a whole ton of it, you can get kind of a nice faded denim blue instead of a really dark, dark navy. So um, that's kind of what I'm thinking here with these guys. I think the navy could be really nice to tie in the navy stripes on the cuff and the collar and the little little logo there on the sweatshirt. And hopefully I could dye both of these at the same time. Um, yeah, we'll see. We are going for the, the quick and easy project here, guys. So hopefully I don't live to regret that choice. But we're going to try it. Of course, as usual, I'm going to be following package directions here from our RIT dye. They got a lot of good directions on the bottle, but also online if you're checking this out for the first time. I believe they mentioned to add some salt if you're dealing with cotton and some vinegar if you're dealing with nylon. So that's good to know. Oops, sorry, really hard to focus in there. But basically, I'm gonna be taking this guy, all these guys to my kitchen laboratory and we're gonna be filling up the sink, hold a bunch of hot water, get in that salt and vinegar, a little bit of, a little scoop of dish soap, get in some of our dye. I think I'm only gonna be using maybe about a quarter of a bottle. Because I would love to get kind of a denim-y color and not super dark. I do know these are going to turn different because one's cream and one's bright white. And the fiber content's going to be different. But I'm hoping it'll still kind of work. <laughs> still coordinate. I think it'll, it'll still be cute. Let's try it. Of course, I'll be stirring the garments around in the dye. And once they're a color I want, I'll pull them out refill up the sink and put in some writ fixative to try to lock in that dye a little bit let that sit for about 20 minutes and then i can launder these guys on cold and hopefully we'll have ourselves an outfit we need to talk about rubber bands and tying these things up and then we can head to the kitchen let's get started for both the skirt and the sweatshirt I'm trying to do something pretty easy. I'm trying to just bunch and scrunch that fabric up as evenly as I can, keeping it somewhat loose, and then I'm gonna get some rubber bands on there to just hold things in place as best as I can. I'm not going for a really vibrant tie-dye pattern today, like a starburst or something like that. I'm going for more of a marbled look, so I want most of the garment to be blue with some lighter patches, I'm trying to avoid any really bright white or cream patches showing through today. I'm trying to make my bunches as even as I can on front and back and getting those rubber bands on there. Of course, I will check the garments once they're in the dye. Maybe I need to open the rubber bands up a little bit to make sure that dye can get into all those hidden areas. We'll have to check. Of course, the sweatshirt is basically the same process, it's just a little trickier because there are collars and sleeves. I just did my best and hoped that it would work out. And we're here in the kitchen laboratory, getting our supplies going on over here. Always good to have some cleanup supplies ready your gloves and you know a good spoon used just for dyeing stuff got our sink of course and you can tell we've got you know a bunch of light colored surfaces kind of co covered up where you can 
it's always nice to be able to prevent messes, especially when you're dealing with dye. So good to prep your work service. I'm going to fill up this sink with hot water and some of those additives we need. And let's get to dyeing. Okay guys, it's been about 12 minutes, maybe like 15 minutes or so with our guys in the dive bath. We've been stirring around a bit. Interesting. So our sweatshirt's actually taking the dye more than the shorts. And I kind of thought it was going to be the other way around. But I'm really digging these colors. I did go through with my sweatshirt here and kind of open up the the scrunched up fabric parts a little bit just to make sure there weren't any super bright white spots where I didn't want them that's a zipper right there but um yeah I, you know I sometimes you really want a lot of pattern and a lot of difference of color and sometimes you don't as much so I just wanted to make sure I didn't have like any like bright patches um so I kind of opened up the fabric a little bit and letting the dye get in there for just a moment or two and then I think I'm actually going to pull this guy out because I about think he's about as dark as I want. And then I'll be keeping the scored in here a little bit longer. I also need to check on this one to see if there are a lot of really bright white patches or not. I'm not quite so worried about the squirt having some more texture. I think that might be kind of cool. I just didn't want it on the sweatshirt, like having a bright white patch under the arm or something. The sleeves definitely were tied up a little tighter than everything else, and so they needed a little work. Take this guy out, let this guy sit, and stir him around for probably, I don't know, 10 more minutes at the most. And then we'll get this into some fixative and see how these guys turn out. Actually, guys, on closer inspection, I started taking the rubber bands off the sweatshirt, and I realized that there were still some really bright patches, really bright white patches on the sleeve so I'm just putting those in for like two or three more minutes to kind of like make it so those aren't bright white like I want a little difference but not bright white especially since I didn't have bright white patches on the rest of the sweatshirt so note to self always a good idea to take off the rubber bands and look at the item before you drain the sink of dye made that mistake before guys uh, learn from my mistakes all right let's keep going Well, we've got our pieces out of the sink, and oh, I almost, well, I did actually do exactly what I told you not to do. Oh, phew, I had taken the plug out of the sink and was draining away that dye, but I realized, hey, I'm taking the rubber bands off. I might find some white patches on this. I better save that dye just in case I need a little bit of it, oh, to cover up a spot like that one had a couple bright white little patches so i'm putting this back in the dye for a couple minutes just to even those out and now we've got our sink full of clean water and fixative to lock in those colors
And here are the final results. Oh my goodness, you guys. Talk about a transformation. Wow. Okay, I am I am kind of surprised on how these turned out. I expected them to be a little different in color, but not quite as different as they turned out. And wow, this is really good educational experience for me because I realized I really haven't dyed many nylon things before. So trying nylon out with the regular RIT dye and seeing that yes, it does work, but also that it can turn things a different color than it would with another fiber content. Hey, whoa, good for me to see. I would think that, you know, the sweatshirt, I was thinking it was going to take the dye less than it did because it is a poly blend, but it did pretty well. I did not make a very concentrated dye mix for this. I only used about a quarter of a cup because I did want to get that kind of lighter, more faded denim blue. And that sweatshirt is a lot of a lot like what I would expect from this dye. Uh, usually it has kind of a purple tint, a little bit of gray. Although it definitely took the dye better than I thought it would. It, it's looking good. I'm loving that. Very interesting how the skirt, even though it started out more of a bright white, turned more green. Isn't that cool? I mean, I, I, I didn't know that was going to happen. I think it's it's really fun how kind of the marbling effect really came out on the nylon. You might have seen I did end up almost draining my sink and then putting the squirt back in for just a moment because I had a couple bright white spots I wanted to take care of. So <clears throat> I almost went against my advice. Glad I caught myself and just wanted to get that marbling to be a little less bright but still pretty like the results there. Also like the, the marbling on the sweatshirt. Glad I didn't get any really bright spots, but I still got some color difference. Yeah, I, wow. These definitely turned out less matching than I had originally hoped for. But don't get me wrong, I'm still going to be enjoying wearing these guys. They're both really pretty. They're both comfy as well. So wearing them together or separately, I'll, I'll definitely be wearing these guys and having a lot of fun with it. Tell you what, you guys, if you get behind changing stuff up, taking light-colored stuff, turning it into bright-colored stuff, and just DIYing your own stuff, hey, give us a thumbs up, will ya? And consider subscribing for more bright and crazy adventures here on Partners in Craft. You never know what we're going to be up to around here. I've got some outdoor adventures planned, and I think this outfit is going to be perfect for that. So let me put that together I'll take you along with me and show you how it looks.